Welcome, welcome, you carrier of the greatest mercy which ever exists. Please put some drops on my head. My obeisances and loving hugs to all of you. So by the sweet will of our Guru Mandari, we are still searching for quotes of Chaitanya Charitamrita in Radharasa Sudhanidhi and we came up to verse number 232. And this verse is actually also a verse about searching. Searching for the king of relishes. But why should a manjari search for the king of relishes? If she is doing so, there can be only one reason. She is searching for Radharani. It's her seva. So the quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita is from Antya Lila. 20. Kanta Krishna Kore Rosa Krishna Poi Shantosa Shukka Poi Tadhana Bharsane Yatta Yogya Kore Mana Krishna Tate Shukka Pana Jade Mana Alapa Sadane When a lady love is angry with Krishna and rebukes him, it satisfies him and makes him happy. Her man has suitable proportions and he will have little trouble to convince her to give it up. So now we get some idea why Srila Prabhupada Saraswati in his Manjuri form is searching for the king of relishes. Shyam Sundara has removed Srimati's peak from outside of the Kunja and now he hides himself in order to taste the sweetness of her love in another way. Srimati asks her girlfriends to bring Shyam back into her Kunja. But the Sakis say, Radhe, first you drew him out of the Kunj how we are going to ask him to come back now again? Tell us. Anyway, don't worry. Your pure love will automatically attract him to you again. And if you are still eager to meet him now, then you should send someone else out to bring him back. We managed to draw him out of your kunja. We won't be able to bring him back now. 
hearing these words. Srimati orders her maidservant, who stands by her side, fanning her, to go to go out and search for Shamsundara. Shamsundara waits in hiding to relish the sincere eagerness of the maidservant, whose face is like a mirror that exactly reflects Swamini's feelings of happiness and sorrow. Shyam can see Radhika's anxiety clearly reflected on the maidservant's face. So how wonderful! When a lady love is angry with Krishna and rebukes him, it satisfies him and makes him happy. Her man has suitable proportions and he will have little trouble to convince her to give it up. Kanta Krishna Kore Rosa Krishna Pai Santosha Shuka Pai Tadana Barzane Yatayokya Koremana Krishna Tate Sukapana Jademana Alap Sadhane Chaitanya Charit Amrita Antya Lila 20 So there is a second part also but maybe someone wants to share something on the first part Actually, I was waiting for you to share something. <laughs> Suniti, <laughs> the things are always different. This is the spiritual world. <laughs> yes, unexpected, right? Unexpected <laughs> that first Shimati Radhika is in man. She is a little bit angry. She doesn't want to see that black guy. They throw him out. And just a little bit later, she says, Bring him back. <laughs> and all of this is the game of pure love. And uh, Shama Sundara has, I, I thought it was interesting also. First of all, our conception, our material conception of this is completely different, right? If somebody is uh, saying to me, I don't want to see you again, anybody, then I would stay away from them. <laughs> but in the spiritual world, this is all like a lila, like a game of exchanging and heightening feelings, making feelings go higher, because there's no ego involved. It's only the pleasure. So also Baba says here in the commentary, it's for the pleasure of Krishna. It's for the pleasure of Shyam. And sometimes Swamini, Swamini she's so mad that she changes her moods very quickly. <laughs> Go out, oh, come back. <laughs> and the Sakis, it's also interesting, uh, they say, we threw him out, we cannot run behind him to get him back. He, he, you know, that will be somehow very strange. <laughs> but the Mandaris, the Mandaris, they are different. They can feel all of uh, Swamini's feeling and so much it will reflect on their face. And the interesting thing is that Shyam has removed Srimati's peak from outside the Kunj. I was thinking, what does that mean? <laughs> he is somehow, <laughs> he has, you know, he went outside, they threw him out. And somehow, from outside the kunch, he has done something. Also, he is involved in twisting Shimati Radhika's feelings. So in the same way, she is twisting his feelings, and he is twisting her feelings. And as we know, the mandris are always the messengers in both cases. Whether it seems to be good or bad, 
in both cases, it is only for the heightening of the feelings of the bath and the mandari. She is a mirror. Actually, that word man jari, man man mind and jari in Hindi means mirror. So in in the in the face in the mirror like face of Shrimati Radhika's servants, Mohan can see her feelings. So like this, she is also catching him back, or inviting him back. Now she becomes eager again. Before she was pl giving pleasure by being, you know, in opposition in Vamya bath, it's called. And now again comes, where are you? <laughs> My Swamini wants you back. And she is giving exactly the feelings and the face that Swamini has, you know, expressed just before. And why? Because it's giving pleasure to Shia. And usually the Mandaris, they don't look for the cat to to the king of relishes like this, right? They are not interested. They just want to serve Swamini. But when Swamini sends them out, they will be expert in how to invite him into the kunj. And sometimes we know also they are, you know, Krishna is begging them to show in which kund my, my uh, beloved is. And then he's begging them. So this Leela of Prem, Prema Leela is going eternally, you know, from one side to the next, and it's always surprising, it's always fresh, and it's always a lot of fun. That, that's what I can feel from this uh, situation. Thank you so much. You made it very clear, this scene now. So I wanted to really point again on that face is like a mirror that exactly reflects Swamini feelings of happiness and sorrow. So if we see a mirror, we just see our body outside reflected. Maybe you can see some smile and think, oh, this person is happy. Or you see something else and you may think, hmm, he may be in that mood or she may be in this mood. But actually, these mirrors, they are so clear. They are most clear. They reflect Swamini's heart. The mandaris are so pure that whatever is in their heart, these are just the feelings of Swamini and nothing else. There is no space for other things in the heart of the mandari. She is living with Swamini together in one bath. And this you can see in the face, at least the one who can see it. And Shyam Sundara, of course, he can. He cannot see everything, actually, because some hidden motives sometimes he's not able to see. The mantras know him better than he himself, because Swamini knows him better than he himself. But it is like Shyam Sundara sees Swamini directly, although it's the Mandari. So he has this wonderful clear vision because of the purest heart of the mandri. Nothing lost 
and the Manjari didn't add anything. So what a wonderful position the Manjari has. Shyam can see Radhika's anxiety clearly reflected on the maidservant's face. Because the maidservant's face reflects Swamini's heart. I think this is a wonderful point to meditate on. If we want to reach one day this service, whenever we stand in front of the mirror, we can meditate on that. <laughs> Instead of looking at our pickles and... <laughs> It's just, <clears throat> it just remind me what you said and Suniti, what we was reading, that the uh, spiritual world is just uh, more similar like a uh, world of a uh, small child, of kids. No? Uh, <laughs> we hear before, no? The Swamini is just uh, one, in one moment she is angry with Krishna and in another moment you want to bring him. So like kids, when they uh, uh, make a joke, no? In, they, they don't remember what they said before. Every moment is fresh, new. And like you say, said also, they are reflecting the mind of Brother Rani. The, the small child also, they reflect emotion of the big one. So it's, it's, really, like, it's really like Jesus said. <laughs> So it's, it, this dealing are not dealing with like big person, how is that, growing, grow, growing people. It's just a kid. We, we should turn to be kids in this beautiful realm of oh. <laughs> spiritual world. So thank you. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful point that the pure heart doesn't want to interact because it doesn't have any motive it's just reflecting it's just part of the game this is what children want to be they want to be part of the game and the mandaris they want to serve that game also to be a part and serve that wonderful game of love And the happiness of Swami, Swamini is the happiness of the Mandri. And Swamini's happiness is when Shyam Sundra is happy. And that's why she's changing her mind so quickly. Because she can read the heart of Shyam Sundari before he knows what he wants. She is much more quick than he can understand his wishes. And she immediately fulfills him. You want to play a little bit? Okay. Go, go out. <laughs> no, no, come back, come back. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> Don't look at me like this. <laughs> Everything is just a real funny, wonderful game of love. And we will take part. The day will come, not because we have any qualification, but our qualification is Radharani's mercy. Her our Darya is our qualification, her mercy, her greatness of her love, 
which reaches up to the highest state and down to the lowest people. This is what makes sure that one day, if we just stay, stay in that want, yes, I really want, then we'll, we, we will be in that seva also. So it's so wonderful to meditate on that and to ask like the great souls, when, oh when, will that day be mine? When the maid servant cannot find Sham Sundara, she anxiously cries out, Oh Radhanath! Who possibly can hear a maid servant crying out loudly? for Shyam Sunda. But she is saying Radha Nath. Even then, first, she is with Radha. Even in calling out his name, she is first with Radha. And this is her loyalty. And this tells him, I'm not calling for you because of me. I'm calling out for you because of your beloved, my Swamini. Just in that name, everything is inside. O oh, Lordly Swan, that enjoys swimming in the deep nectar lake of Radhika's heart. O oh, Lordly Swan, that enjoys swimming in the deep nectar lake of Radhika's heart. Such a description only a person who loves her can make like that. Who could possibly say it like that? Every word, every syllable is well chosen. It's like a love song. It's like a love song itself about her Swamini. In the same time, it's an addressing to Shamsundra. If my Swamini cannot meet you, the whole world is empty for her. How can you remain indifferent towards her? And now we see how expertly this maidservant is taking Radhanath around the finger. The Sakis could not do like that. What would they do? They don't have such weapons to fight that battle. And they honestly admit, it was already enough to get him out. We cannot bring him back. It's not possible for us. You have to send someone else, someone who's expert in doing that. And that's the Manjari.
because the mandri has all power all power from radharani with her and only radharani can bring him from any place in any circumstance only she can do that or her mandaris Please show yourself to this wretched maidservant. Now you may think, why now it's coming outside? And now Ananda Das Babaji is saying, any aspirant who yearns for Krishna's mercy should cry out like that. This sentence here, is half inside, half outside. Right? Starting with please show yourself to the maidservant, but then the bratch is inside. This is not the consciousness in pure consciousness of the Sitadeya. And that's why it's coming out. Any aspirant who yearns for Krishna's mercy should cry out to him like this, accepting the mood of a humble servant of Sri Radhika. This is the magical herb that attracts and controls Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna. Very nice, Gauravani. I like your um, explicit observation of Baba's moods. Well, let's see, to feel Baba. Yes, he is so uh, absorbed, and that's how he's sharing this Leela. You know, on base on the, of the verse of Chaitanya Chaitamrita and Antya Leela. And then also he is giving us hints to chant like this, to chant our mantra like this. Usually Prabhupada says to, you know, chant Maha Mantra like the child that is crying for Mother Hara. I like that also. That is very inspiring eh? for us, especially as aspiring Dasis. But now here Baba gives us another hint or another opportunity to feel also while chanting. <coughs> to cry like this, accepting the mood of a humble servant of Sri Radhika. Means that I am aware of my service. I have gotten orders of Sri Mati Radhika. And I try to enter into that feeling how I am serving Radhika. And that is a big point for me, for me in my practice. I'm talking here about myself because my habit is still to chant, uh, how do you say that, um, superficial. Of course, I know Mahamantra is Radha and Krishna and for myself, I feel often about the how they come together and we get this from our Gurudev, you know, how they meet and how, how they embrace. This is also very nice. I try to enter that mood and that feeling or that vision. And here Baba is giving us his meditation on Maha Mantra. He is in the Leela, like you say, Gauravani, and at the same time, he is now coming in half, you know, half in and half out. 
giving us some uh, inspiration, the other sadakas who also need to hear from someone who is already connected there more than myself, much more. Look, you can chant like this. If you try to chant like a Darcy, if you want to enter this feeling and this mood, chant like you are calling out to Krishna, but for Radhika. That's why we call him Radhanath. So that I like very much. It's such a beautiful perspective. Because I find in the difference of chanting with God consciousness, please Krishna or Radhika, you are divine God and Goddess, help me in my life like this. That is another perspective here. This is the perspective of Leela, uh, how to enter into Leela feelings. The feelings of, I want to serve you, Radhika, by calling out to Krishna to serve you because it is your desire. That's beautiful. So we can see that souls like Ananda Das Babaji and uh, there are so many similar souls like our Guru Manjari and Srila Prabhupada and Srila Raghunathas and so on, Rupa Kusmami and so if we see that if we read their books they are actually also doing like in their Manjari Seva they are actually transporting a picture of the scene but in Vani in words but they try to paint us that picture very clear so that we can enter in that motion emotion or feeling for them it's already emotion because there's a difference between feelings and emotion emotion based on steady feelings it's coming automatically. That means you are used to feel like that. And then some special feeling, some emotion is coming out automatically. So only a person who is fixed already in the feeling can do so. And they do like this for our sake. We are so lucky to be with them again and again when we chant their vanis, we remember what they say and try to copy it copy it for us in our feelings do it like them and then see what kind of feelings are coming in my heart what I can receive. And because we are different persons, we may have different reception of the same scene. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay. We don't have to be ashamed or think that something is wrong with us. And because we are not the same persons. If you follow a person, because he made the, he, he is at the goal, he made it, it doesn't mean that you will be exactly like him in the in the moment you reach the goal. You'll be at the same place, but you may feel other things. You may think other things because you are individual. And this is the most important thing for me, which I learned. Swamini will never reject any person no matter how individual this person may be. So even if people cannot take this nature, Swamini can. She will always. So there is not one person to be outside. 
all persons are inside, all souls, because a mother loves all their children and wants to play with all their children. And when we are in Rasa, then we play with her. But first of all, to be in Rasa, we have to understand who is our mother, how we are connected, what is her nature and what is our nature. And this we can only feel by her mercy. So by following others, we may see more clearly our own nature. And this real nature is the best thing to offer to Radharani's seva, in her seva, to her lotus feet. Because this is how she wants us, individual. She wants all our love and this can only be if you are really yourself and not try to be anyone else. But in the same time, we follow that role models to get to this point. And we can see it very clearly in history that it is like this. Prabhupada did so many things, his god brothers were not amused. They thought he is some kind of Maya, maybe. Something is wrong. <laughs> but in the end, it was proven very clearly that he was just serving in his own mood. And sometimes things are changing. People will be in more difficult times and more mercy is needed. It has to be cooked down for them more. Don't think that Radharani don't want that. Radharani wants to be more merciful and more merciful and lengthened her arms down. And this she is doing through her mantras, also here. Also through Sadakadeha. She is taking care personally of everyone. So individual and so lovely. I think it needs that full picture of her mercy to don't stand in the way, just that we do not stand in the way. Radha Gauravani, I think also this subject to not be myself in the way of my advancement. It has for myself a lot to do with this Achintya Beda Beda Tattva that Lord Chaitanya came to give us, which I feel is revealed in newer and newer realizations as I am you know, progressing on this path of Raga Bhakti. Because how could I be in my way? I could only be in my way if I don't realize that I am eternally connected to Srimati Radhika, to her service. Yes, this is Appa Radha, to be without her in that moment, to leave yes. her. Yes, to yeah, leave then, her and, and then away, right? Then I am an obstacle for my own progress. Because yeah. I believe, or I feel like I am uh, something different. Yes. 
She so wants me to be something different. Yeah, or or I just I am not qualified or whatever. Or others I want not... to be something else. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I and then I don't feel qualified actually. Actually, feelings they come and go. It, according to the gunas, right? Yes, you can say like this, but my observation is like if other people are putting their expectations on you, also on that path of devotion, then you may think, oh, I should be like this, I should be like that. Actually, this is still some kind of Aishwarya. Otherwise, I would not accept. Because if I know that Radharani loves me like I am, I don't need to have any form outside, especially. Of course, I have to respect all others. That's, that's clear. But I don't have to have a special form outside, you know, behaving in a very special way to be accepted. I am accepted, always. I am loved, always. I cannot do anything to be loved. You cannot qualify yourself through sadhana. You cannot qualify yourself by any means. It's not possible. We read this in the scriptures. The only qualification is to be yourself and just open your hands for the Audarya of Radharani. It's an Audarya Lila. It's streaming down to you. Take it as you are and don't try to be someone else because then your hands are not fully open. That's my experience. I don't try to hide anything. I tell Swamini, yes, I'm fallen. Yes, I have this and this addiction. I, oh my God, Swamini, I'm so useless, really. I know. But on the other hand, I heard so many times how merciful you are and that you take me like this. So that's my only hope. I do not have really, really, I do not have any qualification. That's the truth. It's not just, you know, some saying, oh, I have to be a good devotee. I have to say that I have no qualification, you know, like this. Then everyone will think, oh, he is so elevated. Ah, just see, he's so humble. No, it's not a game. It's a fact. I have to stand in front of Swamini and tell her honestly from the heart, I know. I'm aware. So many years I try, now slowly understand I'm useless. So now, because of that, my only hope is your mercy. I'm lost. So like this, the mercy is coming. I can make a game out of it, yes. The loser is standing still. <laughs> it's me in that moment. Because the Audarya is there everywhere. It's like the snow outside here now, it's snowing. It's falling everywhere. But I'm hiding inside. No snow is falling on my head. It's white. It's Jai Shri. The white color of Jai Shri. I could actually embrace it and say, yes, please, come to me. But I'm hiding inside. Ravani. <laughs> 
my disqualification is endless, no? But mercy of Radhika is more bigger. And also, you, as, as you will say, she is Jai Shri, so she will always be victorious. <laughs> this is our hope. Jai Radhi. Thank you so much, Dayanidhi. I knew I can have all my hope in you. You made it so clear. That's the point. I'm just a reflection of your mirror of your emotion. <laughs> you said, actually. <laughs> I didn't say. Someone used my mouth, maybe. I don't know. We are so lucky. We are so endless lucky. We should dance from morning through the night till the next morning. We are in the connection of the mercy of the most merciful person which is existing, which even God needs that mercy. Even God needs that mercy. And even God in his sweet form needs her mercy, which is even higher. So we are so lucky. And Chaitanya Charit Amrita wants to actually give us this information. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself wants to inform us. So that's why his expansion, like Chaitanya Charit Amrita, the nectar of his lila, just wants to inform us. Take the mercy, it's here, it's there, everywhere. Just take the mercy. What are you crying for? <laughs> Everything is with you. So when we churn that, that deep nectar ocean, then some drops will always come out and fall on our head. And hopefully one day it will swap out over us or we will fall in. That's the best. And sink down. We will not try to swim in that moment, no. We will sink down. We will also not try to dive in that moment. No, it's too fast. Then we cannot enjoy every drop of that mercy. We will just sink down. And this is actually what we should also do here. If you try to swim, you cannot dive. But if you try to dive, you cannot sink. So we should just let ourselves fall into the mercy ocean of Radharani. Any aspirant who yearns for Krishna's mercy should cry out to him like this. Sunidhi Didi made it very clear. If we cry out for Krishna, we mean to say, we only cry out for our Swamini. 
That's why we cry out for him. Not separately. Accepting the mood of a humble servant of Sri Radhika. This is the, mag the magical herb that attracts and controls Sri Krishna. This magical herb from the breasts of Swamini, which only he and the babies on her breasts can get, because they are near to that breasts. We are the babies, and Shyam is the lover. And because we can have this magical herb, the bee will be attracted. And he will be fully controlled. The maid servant calls out, O oh, Radhanad! The nectar stream of your flute song is like a magical potion. Is it potion or is there missing an R? Portion? I don't know. That enchants Ocean. all. The potion is like a lotion. <laughs> ah, it's like a lotion. Ah, I don't know this word. Potion. That enchants all the gopis. Why are you still hiding while you can easily remove any proud girl's huff with the flute in your hand? A restless peacock feather wiggles on your head and you wear earrings and a string of fresh gunja beads that have been made by some gopi. All these ornaments can easily enchant Sri Radha and all her gopi friends. All their bright disappears when you show your sweet form to them even once. So how expertly the maidservant is calling and giving him so much hints what will happen if he will come. The proud Radha will be not any more proud. You have a good chance to be together with her. So come fast. <laughs> Very nice subtle hints for him, for the lover, to come immediately. In Lalita Madhava Act 7, it is said that while Radhika was staying in the new Vrindavan garden of Tvarak, suffering from the pangs of separation from Krishna, Nava Brinda and Bakula tried to persuade her to go to meet the Lord of Tvaraka, but Srimati refused. Of course. So her mind is always meditating on one form and just this is actually the point here why Anandadas Babaji is giving this example in the middle of the Lila because he wants to explain 
why the kinkari is choosing these kind of words and description of Krishna. Because Srimati is only longing for that form with the peacock feather and the gunja beads made by some by some gopi. Who could be that some gopi? We know from another verse that some gopi who is actually making that that gunja beads brought by the manjari, stringed by Swamini herself put it in the crown. She is the gopi. That means he is always connected, always thinking of her. So Srila Ananda Das Babaji is so expertly describing every step of the mandri, why it is, it is be done like that, exactly like that, why she is choosing the words. And all this is based on this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita Anjalila 20. Isn't that wonderful? This is Anandadas Babaji's mercy. Actually, he is explaining the connection, not me. Please don't be in illusion. I'm just like a parrot. He is explaining this connection so expertly. And we should try to get all these aspects he is describing. That's why we are reading this 10, 20, 100, 1000, 100,000 times, again and again. As long as we stay here, we will go in and try to churn that nectar and get more and more out of it. And for sure, there will be more and more revealed to us. Because this is the nature now of such transcendental information or transcendental rasa lila in our case. Even from transcendental information there is already a lot of nectar. But much more from these rasika descriptions. Endless sweetness. Hey Garavani, I want to add that the you said it's it's the feeling that really this mercy that comes by opening his heart in this case Shlananta Das Bhavaji Maharaj is is you know it's such a treasure. So what what I learned from this is that to look in all the purports for this nectar, to look always for some feelings that I can, you know, cover my own heart in. Because my own heart doesn't have these feelings so much. My own heart is, uh, you know, is, is a lot based also on intelligence. Yes, I understand. I am in Manjari and it's all about love. <laughs> but to have the feelings connected to the verses, no? To go into a Leela, that these are the remnants. This is actually the Prashad of Sri Guru, of Nitai, of Ananga Manjari, who are calling us 
back into their Leela, into their world, into their heart feelings. This is how I, I perceive it for myself. And I, um, I'm so very thankful that we have the chance that we can go deeply into the feelings of Anantala's Babaji because he is revealing it to them, to us. And to all devotees who are open to, to get it. It's here, it's right here. But even maybe some years before, we could not enter it, right? We could not access it. We didn't have the password <laughs> or whatever it was. My heart was locked. My heart is not open. My heart is in revolution. My heart is in ignorance or whatever it is. But sometimes it's open. And today you have opened it also to us with your feelings that you have to that feeling of Ananda Das Bhavaji. Because if I just read this Chaitanya Chaitamrita verse, when a lady love is angry with Krishna and rebukes him, it satisfies him and makes him happy. And so on and so forth. I don't have the Leela with it. I don't have the whole story. It's like two sentences that have, you know, that Baba gives the whole Leela, gives the whole circumstance, the whole uh, drama. <laughs> how the Mandaris are there, with Shimateratika, how she's sitting, and the, her, her older boy girlfriends, they have just thrown him out. <laughs> And the mandri is fanning. He is giving the picture. He is drawing the painting on the canvas on his heart. Or let's say he has drawn it. That is his bhajan. And like we can look at it now. He is showing his painting. He is showing his emotions. His uh, perceptions. And that is so generous. That is so generous. And I feel because you are all, all, always... Uh, so excited also to, to speak about the Adarya, that is the generosity, that generous mood of, of giving. So we see that how does Shimate Radhika share her generosity through her maidservants, right? And that is already uh, such a treasure to, for myself to, to feel it, how, it, how she works. Because sometimes we think, oh my God, if I could only, you know, see her or perceive her. But here she is. Here she is. Here. She comes through the commentaries of her dasis. She comes through the words of her dasis. So that I thank you. That you are open this up to us, uh, opening it up to us and showing to us how to perceive, how to receive, how to realize, how to connect. And then this uh, feelings of gratitude come. And then the feeling comes, wow, I feel so showered with this mercy. I didn't stay just into my own heart's limitations. I open my heart for the mercy. My container is open, like Gurudev always says. No? I don't put it down. I take the umbrella away. <laughs> and I just sit here and I receive. And I let the feelings flow of another Darcy who is so merciful because she has been touched by Shimati Radhika. This morning in the class with Gurudev, this was the subject. And also uh, verse uh, 14 of, of uh, Shishiradara Sudanidi, it was the subject that when the flowers of the forest of Rindavan, they are touched by Shimati Radhika, they start opening up. They are blooming and they are trickling with the honey and the fragrance, you know, by her mercy. So we are lucky that. Uh, Mandasi has been touched. You know, this Darcy here, our Baba, 
and all of those Darcy's who are helping to share it. And then they open and they, and the fragrance of that being touched by Shimati Radhika, it comes to us. And that is the mercy. This is the generosity. It is not a secret. It's not so something very mysterious. It is also very easy to access if my heart, if I open that, you know, for receiving. And I'm always, again and again, I feel so surprised. Uh, these verses, they open again and again in a new and ever fresh way. It's not, oh, now I know this verse. I have read it. I have heard it uh, 10 times. No, every time something new was coming in the heart. Some new feelings, some new uh, nuances, some new colors. Like when you paint a painting or you're writing a poem, then you can never really say once when the painting is 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 uh, fulfilled <laughs> because you could always add a little shade in this corner or you know but in the spiritual sense that means that all these feelings that we receive here by the mercy of our teachers they are always fresh always flowing and never become uh, old or so to say uh, dusty or so and that is so a very nice uh, thing and I, I observe myself my sada kadeha my mind and my heart sometimes it closes for that and why because I'm not willing to receive and why because I like to stay in my old uh, feelings of identifying myself as the body and mind. And then it's like a lock. Have you noticed this with yourself? I have noticed it with myself. Why sometimes I can feel so much nectar and sometimes I feel it's dry. It's always my consciousness. And then again, I pray, like you say, I'm useless anyway. I'm fallen anyway. I pray for some opening. I pray for some revelation. I pray for Shimati Radhika's softness that she will touch me so that I can be touched by her mercy again. Maybe that is also a way to look at how I am in the way. Because the locking, it often it comes... Um, by my own, uh, you say, non-ability to open up and to fully receive. And then I'm praying again to be touched or, not, you know, touched by Shimati Radhika's dasis who are non-different from her. Thank you so much, Suniti. You were just reminding me on one topic. You're describing it, it's like waves, sometimes full of feelings, sometimes less, sometimes full, sometimes less. In life it's going like this. I also observed that in my life, and I try to, to see why it is like this, why it cannot be stable. And one aspect, I don't say it's all, I just say it's one aspect I was looking to, is that when we get the mercy, we feel very good. And then, when we feel very good, we think, oh yes, now I got it. <laughs> now it will flow on like that. And by the time we think, yes, we take it for granted. And we forget that actually we are just living on the mercy. So now the tendency will arise that we may be a little bit puffed up again. Maybe. Maybe it's very subtle. 
And then again, it falls down just to remember us. Didn't you want to pray for the mercy all the time? Like Srila Raghunadas Goswami, when he fell back to his Sadakavesh, which was on the highest state you can have in Sadakavesh, he immediately cried. Immediately. For me, it's like Swamini wants to say to us, don't you want to grow more? Are you satisfied already? But this was just a drop of my mercy. Don't you want to take more? There's much more. I'm missing you. Come to me, serve me directly. Don't be satisfied with this drop. Seems to be that for endless eagerness, we should have always endless humbleness. And, uh, but we can also have that only in the Siddha Deha. So maybe this problem will be always here. So we should accept maybe also that and to hope. This is my feeling. This is a most important point you are mentioning. Most important. Endlessly. Endlessly. We can be only in our Sita Deha. So endless Rati you can only have in Sita Deha. And to reach the highest goal, you need endless mercy, endless rati. Otherwise, you will not do it. Because Swamini is telling, first, be completely mine. When you are completely mine, then I will accept you. So it's such an important point, yes. Only in our Sitadeya we can have this endless hope, endless rati, and we are endless humble and endless eager. It's not possible in Sadak, because in Sadaka Deya there is no endless. So don't you want to get more drops? Swamini is encouraging us very softly. Please pray for more. I will give you, but only if you like. If you are satisfied, I will not give you more. This is love. This is real love. We tend to interfere into other lives. Swamini is not doing this. She is very respectful. If we don't want, she will not give more. But if we want, she will give endless more. You know, Swamini is like the nine. When you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, do you know the nine is very special? The nine never changes in the line. One plus one is two, it changes. One plus nine is ten. 
put out the zero, it's still one. Nine plus two is eleven. That's one and another one. One and one is two. So it doesn't change. Nine and three is twelve. One and two is three again. If you count it in that line again and again, the nine is never changing anything. It's just helping to come up to another level. This is the mathematic experience of Swamini's mercy. 108 is also 9. The Rasa dance. The 108 is standing for the Rasa dance. 108. It's 9. It's Swamini. Because without Swamini, no Rasa dance. Even in mathematics you can find the mercy of our Swamini. Krishna is standing at one. He's always changing. <laughs> but he is the beginning in that way also. So the mercy of Swamini is always there, is always with us and it's in every aspect. But if we want to have more, we should never ever stop to pray for more. Otherwise, it is like you had one Leela together with Swamini and that's it. You only take one Rasa Gula in your life. Give me more, give me more, give me more. And this is the mood we can find in that scripture from Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati and Srila Raghunada Goswami. We find this mood and we find this also in Chaitanya Charit Amrita. But Chaitanya Charit Amrita is more like Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is very expert in uh, short scripture. How it's called? Steno. You know Steno? Short hand. Huh? Short hand? Short hand. Steno. You just make some and it, it's a whole, a whole topic inside one, two words. So Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is like some Steno typing Chaitanya Charitamrita. All the Lilas are inside. But very com com uh, com uh, how do you say compromised com no com compressed compressed yes thank you very compressed and if you touch it it's exploding if you touch it with a rasa wish it's like the bottle opening the ghost comes out but it's a good ghost now. It's Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explaining you everything. Boom! Wow! It's a miracle. This is the mercy of that great souls. And they always want to give us more than we can accept. That's why if we don't pray for it, like Gurudev said, the cow needs a calf to give milk. 
and the calf has to tip, you know, on the oiter, I don't know, on the, to drink. It's the other. The other. In English, it's the other. Yeah, to push the oh. other. It has to <laughs> push the other. Of to German, the Zitzen. <laughs> yes, Zitzen. <laughs> so actually, this is needed. We have to want and we have to make it like this. We want more, 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 more. Give me more, give me more. That's why it is said. That's why it is said. Rati is the way. Isn't it? Dayanidi, sorry, what do you want to say? Just, I remember uh, this Leela of Anyor, Anyor, Anyor in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And they feel <laughs> the Govardhana. And I, I, I have one question. Uh, uh, you you explain that uh, these verses are compressed and it's like a button can explode and give us more mercy. Something similar happened, uh, if I understand, also with Gurudev and with mercy of his Gurudev. So sometimes, uh, uh, that, does this mercy must come always from our Gurudev, or it can come? Or any any verse of uh, like example Chaitanya Charitamrita or Radhara Sasudanidi. Sometimes I feel that uh, they're all one team and they all are well wishers. Uh, they want uh, are being in the same way like Guru they want. Or so sometimes I, I have this feeling. But sometimes also I have the feeling that it must be guru, our Gurudev. So how is the, what is the right? Well, I can only speak from my experience. I had a Guru in ISKCON and he went from ISKCON. So I thought now I will be lost. But then I remembered, actually, he was in the line of Prabhupada. So, why I don't pray to Prabhupada? So, I was praying to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada, I could immediately feel he was guiding me. So, in the end, my Gurudev came and gave me Rasika initiation, the next step. And he was talking about Prabhupada. I was surprised. How is it? He's in the Baba line and he knows about Prabhupada. How is that? Yes, they are all one team, for sure. And this is actually the whole Guru principle. Nitai is everywhere. Nitai is also Mahavishnu. Nitai is in your heart. Nitai is in every atom. Nitai is everywhere. What he is actually bringing, Radharani's love. So in every atom, Radharani's love is there. In every heart, Radharani's love is there. In every aspect in our life, Radharani's love is there. The Guru principle is everywhere, everywhere. Every soul can speak to you and bring you a message from your Gurudev. We cannot see Gurudev just in a body, in his sadhak. Yes, it's good you have a relationship with the sadhaka. It's nice to serve him. Nothing bad about it, but there are more aspects and you have to go more deep. Because one day the sadaka will be gone. And then 
If you don't understand that your Guru never leaves you, he's always there, he's always in every atom, he's always with you, and Guru Manjari is lasting forever. It will never stop. The Sadaka will stop to exist, but Guru Manjari never. I heard Gurudev to me speaking through a bump on the street. I really, I had this experience. One day I was before one house, there was a yoga sign because this was the house of a friend in Düren. You know her, Mohini, and she is doing yoga. So there's a yoga sign. I had a problem I was thinking about and some bump came and we just came in the same time on the same Bürgersteig on this way to the house. And he was actually one step behind me. Then I stopped at this house and I was standing in front of the sign. Then he was looking at me. <laughs> do you think you can do it? He may have thought about yoga, how this old guy will do yoga, maybe, maybe that was his thought. But I was thinking about something else and this was the answer to my question and I was shocked. In this moment it made boom and the answer was there. And inside I gave myself the answer, yes, this time I can do it with your mercy. And I did it with the mercy of Gurudev. So Guru is everywhere. And until we don't understand that, we will not feel completely safe. Because actually this is what we are, we are completely safe. But we may not feel it yet. Like a child, when the child doesn't see the mama, but the mama has arranged everything and has always the eyes on her children. But sometimes the child don't see the mama and cries out, Mama, 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 where are you? Oh my child, I'm here. Guru Manjari is transferring the love of Radha to every one of his disciples. That's his seva. Radharani has given him this seva and he is taking care. And by giving a seva, Radharani always gives also the shakti because she is shakti. How she could not give shakti? That's, that's explaining the mystical power of a guru. It's Radharani Shakti. And that's, we can see in Panchatattva. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming, Nitai, Advaita Acharya. So we have these aspects, Mahavishnu. We have all these aspects. He's in our heart, he's everywhere in every atom, he's around us, he's with us, everything. But now comes the Shakti side. Gadatha, who is Gadatha? Radharani herself, in another form, in an even more merciful form for us, because she's here. She's not somewhere with Krishna. No, she is here with us. That's one part of her audarya, of her generous generosity of love, because her love is coming down to the lowest people. Everywhere, even in hell, where you would not expect it.
So actually, if you see, Gadatha is the first expansion on the left side of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The second expansion is Srivas. And this is Bhakti Shakti. She is going further. You have a wish to do something in Bhakti. Here is all my energy. Take it. Not only that she is with us in every atom, the Shakti is also with us everywhere. Even in the atom, we may call it the either, the either, where the vibration is going through, right? The either. What is it? The either. Think about it and then think about it. What is the vibration in the smallest part of an atom, which Einstein actually was making very clear? It's just vibration and he called it, it's the vibration of the love of God. So tell me where Radharani is not, where her Shakti is not. Nothing exists outside of Radharani. Because everything which exists is existing by her Shakti, by love. So how it could be without her, it's not possible. So lucky we are, but we should realize it more and more. And realizing we can only by wanting it. And that means, in its consequence, I myself, not others, I myself, standing here, Praying, please, I know I'm useless, but please, your Shakti is endless powerful. You are Jai Shri. Be victorious in my case, please. And she will be. You cannot be so dull that she will not succeed. Take some time. Sometimes it's going faster, sometimes it takes a little bit more time, but she will always succeed. If we want. Sometimes children come with a little hole in the trousers, a little dirt on the pullover. Quickly mother is cleaning it. Sometimes they come and they are just dirt. Takes a little longer but child will be clean, definitely. So this is actually what Gurudev was implanting in our hearts. Whom you heard before saying that the Manjuris are taking the milk of the breasts of Radha? Did you ever heard anyone saying this before? 
No. I also not. So this is the generosity of Radharani's love coming through our Guru Mandrari. They are always one team. And in the end, they are serving Jai Shri, so they will be victorious. I mean, even Arjuna was victorious because he was fighting on the side of Krishna. What to speak of Radharani? She is even victorious over Krishna, so... Like in Krishna K, like in Arjuna case, also I, I feel after your word, it's only a question of the consciousness, our consciousness to understand that everything is done. <laughs> the only point we should have in our mind is we should think it is possible. That's all. For Radharani, it could be possible. The rest is prayers, praying again and again, I need your mercy, I'm lost without you. <laughs> but at least we should think it is possible. If we feel it's impossible, then then it is impossible <laughs> for that moment. <laughs> Till we think, yes, now I feel mm, it could be possible. And that's why we hear that Vani of such great souls, because they actually give us the feeling that it is not it, it is not just possible, it is actually our normal position. And we will be not just, you know, in our nature be accepted. No, we will be loved completely. And when we understand that, then our steps may be a little bit more faster. And we may put our hands up already. Yes, it's, it's, it's Mama. Yes. Oh, I'm coming home. Because no one else will ever accept you as you are, like your mother. So, I'm sorry, I, we, we didn't came far today. <laughs> But I like it when one verse is actually absorbing us, absorbing us all so deeply. And I thank you very much, Dayanidi, Suniti, and Vajeshwari, and all who were here and sharing and taking part and giving this lovely inspiration by words or by feelings. Thank you so much. Honestly, without you all, I'm completely lost. 
I could never ever have any honey drop of this sweetness here in my mouth. Only because you are all so eager and you always come and share, I can also dive in on the base of your eagerness. Thank you for that. Jai Shri Radhe.